Hello, girls. Today's lesson, we're going to look at digestion process, and uh, we're going to look at the chemical reaction that takes place at each part of the digestion, uh, which happens in the alimentary canal. Okay, we're going to have, as you remember in your previous lesson, there are actually four places where digestion takes place. First is in the mouth, then you have the stomach, the next will be the duodenum, and the lastly, lastly place will have the ileum. So in today's lesson, I'm going to cover only two parts, which is the mouth and the stomach. In my next video, I will do the duodenum and the ileum. Okay, first of all, let's look at the digestion of carbohydrates in the mouth. The mouth is the first place where digestion takes place. Okay, and the food that's digested uh, here is actually only carbohydrates. In the mouth, as you know, you have saliva, and saliva contains uh, amylase, amylase enzyme. So here, starch will be digested, will be broken down by amylase enzyme to get maltose. Now remember, maltose is actually a disaccharide, which means that it is not completely digested into the smallest unit of monosaccharide, which is glucose, and also the other uh, like fructose and galactose. So it is only partially digested. It has not finished digestion. It will be further digested, di digested along the way in the elementary canal. Okay, let's look at the notes here. Okay, uh, the saliva comes from the salivary gland, which are three pairs of gland, which are, uh, which are situated behind our ears here and also behind the, under the, the tongue. Okay, you have the salivary glands. So saliva contains salivary amylase that hydrolyzes starch to maltose. This is a product. The pH of the saliva ranges from 6.5 to 7.5. So we can roughly say it is neutral. Okay, the optimal uh, condition for saliva for sal salivary amylase to work is at neutral condition. Okay, now let's look at the action. Starch. Now, why do we plus water here? This is because it is hydrolysis, the process of breaking down using enzyme is actually hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means you need to bring back water. As you recall in your previous uh, lessons, I think a few uh, months ago, where you have your uh, carbohydrates, in order to form your disaccharide or polysaccharide, you need to take away water, right? And that process is called condensation. So in order to break down a more complex molecule or polysaccharide into a disaccharide, or disaccharide into monosaccharide, you need to add back the water. So this process is called hydrolysis, where actually it means a splitting of the molecule using water. So splitting is hydrolysis, and water is hydro. So the uh, product will be maltose. Saliva helps food to form bolus. Bolus is the food which is rolled into a ball, and that is helped by the action of your tongue when you swallow. Okay, it makes it easier for it to be swallowed. So saliva helps to soften the food and form a bolus. When swallowing, the epiglottis will close the trachea. Remember, I mentioned this in my previous lesson. Epiglottis is a flap which closes the trachea. It is to prevent the food from entering the trachea so that you do not have the food enter the trachea and it will choke you to death. Huh? Because it covers your trachea, that means air cannot go into your lungs. Okay, and uh, in the esophagus, the foot bolus is moved by peristalsis. So peristalsis is an involuntary action controlled by the uh, medulla oblongata in your brain. You've learned this in Form 3, first chapter last year, where you have the involuntary movement of the smooth muscles to push and to contract and relax to push the foot down the elementary canal. So peristalsis definition is the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of muscles along the elementary canal. All right, so that is the uh, definition of peristalsis. And it pushes the foot uh, in the form of bolus along the esophagus until it enters the stomach. So you can see the action of contracting. So this side contracts and the other part here will uh, relax. So contract, up here contract, this side will relax. Okay, now let's look at the epiglottis. All right, I want to add the additional for you to see where is the position of the epiglottis. So you can see your epiglottis is here, all right, and here when you're not swallowing, that means you're able to talk. You see the air, air can come up from the trachea. So this is the air that comes up from your lungs, from your, you know, when you, as your diaphragm moves up and down, it pushes up and it vibrates your vocal folds here, the vocal cords, and you are able to produce sound. 
And you can also see that when you swallow, let's say you have a piece of food here, which is about to enter your esophagus. Esophagus is over here, behind. So this is esophagus, O-E-S-O-P-H-A-G-U-S. Now, I may have people asking me why O here and why E here. Okay, it's just a matter of British English and American English. As you know, in Malaysia, we follow the British English, so we prefer to follow, better you see O-E-S. This is a uh, uh, British English, e, esophagus with the E is American English. Okay, so that hope I hope that, that makes it clear. So you see, this is when you are talking, your air comes out, okay, and your epiglottis does not cover, so that air can come out and come out to your mouth and come out to your nose, and you are able to articulate. Now, when you swallow, when you swallow, automatically this flap, which is your epiglottis, this flap here, is covers your trachea. Okay, and this is your larynx, which is your voice box, your voice box. So you can see that air will not be able to come out. You're not able to make any noise or any sound. But at the same time, your food is directed into the tube behind. So the tube behind is the esophagus. So that's why this is a involuntary and it's also automatic. Lah, okay, that you're able to, you don't need to consciously think when I want to swallow, I must not talk. It doesn't, you don't need to do that because it's all automatic. Okay, so that is the action of your esophagus, which actually prevents food from getting lodged in your trachea. Okay, let's go back to uh next part, going into the stomach. So here, to recap, you only have digestion of starch in the mouth. Yeah, that's the only thing. Even when you're eating protein or there's fish or whatever, meat, it does not get digested in the mouth. You have to go through the esophagus and the next stage, okay, it's going to be the stomach. There is where your protein gets digested. Okay, now next one, let's look at here. Digestion of protein in the stomach. The surface of the stomach wall is lined with epithelial cells that have undergone adaptation. So here inside, uh, inside the stomach wall here, you have epithelial cells. So if you magnify these folds, they're highly folded. Okay, this is to also increase the surface area. Right, see the highly foldedness of your stomach wall. You will have different types of cell, epithelial cell on the surface. And there are three types and they produce different things. The three types of epithelial cells are chief cells, parietal cells, and mucous cells. So chief cells secrete pepsinogen. Okay, this is the enzyme that is an inactive form, inactive form of enzyme that is going to be activated by the hydrochloric acid and it's going to form pepsin. So this is the enzyme which breaks down protein. Okay, next you look at parietal cells. They produce the acid called hydrochloric acid and this preserves and maintains a condition of 1.5 to 2 pH. So your stomach is highly acidic. And there's a function of that, and we'll look at it later. Okay, mucus cells secrete mucus. So you also have a, a slippery substance that is white color. Okay, uh, that would actually help to protect the surface of your stomach from being hydrolyzed by the enzyme and the acid. Okay, let's look at pepsinogen. It's an inactive enzyme that is activated by hydrochloric acid to become pepsin. So you will have pepsin. And the action of pepsin is actually to hydrolyze protein into polypeptides so protein as you know is highly folded it could be globules so very long chain all right many very long and polypeptides is also long all right but it is less complicated shorter strands so you have okay polypeptides so breaking it down then also plus water because this is also hydrolysis hydrolysis with enzyme called pepsin Okay, now it's a function of hydrochloric acid. Just now we go back to the function of hydrochloric acid. It is to prepare a medium which is suitable for pH for pepsin. Pepsin requires an acidic pH of 1.5 to 2 pH. So it will work very well in this environment which is acidic. Therefore, your digestion will happen at a fast rate. Okay, another action of the acid in your stomach here is to stop the enzymatic action of salivary amylase. So at the moment when your salivary, uh, when your amylose or, or the starch enters your uh, your stomach, it will temporarily stop digestion. Okay, because the condition inside your stomach is acidic, and for the salivary amylase, it requires 
uh, neutral condition. So at the moment, even though you have undigested starch, you may have your uh, maltose and all that, it will temporarily stop digestion in the stomach. In number three, you will also kill the bacteria. This acid is uh, very acidic, so it's able to kill bacteria that's in the food. And the function of the mucus is to protect the stomach wall from the action of being hydrolyzed or being uh, corroded upon by the hydrochloric acid and the enzymes. Okay, so let's go on. The food in the stomach is mixed with gastric juice. So gastric juice is the juice that comes up from the epithelial cells here. So you will have hydrochloric acid, you will have pepsin, you will have renin, you will also have the mucus. So food, this is the uh, chemical digestion. Chemical digestion means your food is actually broken up into smaller molecules. So that will be the polypeptides. Huh? Okay, another thing that happens is a physical digestion. Food is churned. Churn is a turning, turning action, a peristaltic action. So your stomach actually squeezes the food inside there for a few hours, usually about two to four hours. Your food is kept into the in your stomach for two to four hours. And until after that, at the end of four hours, it roughly becomes a semi-solid. It's all watery and all that. We call it chyme. Okay, so this chyme is semi semi-solid, semi-solid uh mass called chyme. And your sphincter here. There's a sphincter here. Sphincter is something like a muscle here, which will actually relax. So when it relaxes, this sphincter is called pyloric sphincter. Pyloric sphincter will relax and the contents will move into the next stage or next part will be the duodenum. Okay, there's another uh, sphincter here as well. This is called the cardiac sphincter. Okay, sphincter is like... Uh, muscles that can contract and relax so here is to stop the stomach contents from going up into the esophagus so when you are not feeling well when you want to vomit right when you have a stomach contents needs to be removed so this one will relax your cardiac sphincter will relax and your stomach will actually contract and push all the vomit up there so that's how you vomit up your contents uh, from the stomach and it's usually very acidic you can feel it it's burning right it's acidic because you have a, a hydrochloric acid inside your stomach. Okay, so I think that's about it. We have gone through the digestion of mouth in the mouth and in the stomach. So to recap, this is a very simple part. For the mouth, you only have digestion of carbohydrate. Specifically from starch, it becomes maltose. Okay, and in the stomach, specifically, you will have digestion of the... Um, Protein, protein will be digested by the enzyme called pepsin. You are going to get polypeptides. Another one is actually uh, casein, uh, caseinogen. The caseinogen is actually the protein that is found in the milk. Okay, and it is actually digested by another enzyme here we call renin. Okay, I will give you a summary of all these enzymes in a table form so you will have a clearer picture. Okay, from caseinogen will be digested into casein. Sol in soluble form, will turn into soluble form. Okay, I'll go give it all in a table. So that's it for today's lesson. And we will uh, go into more detail later for another lesson.